1620 AM out of New Jersey, which broadcast in New Jersey, New York, Pennsylvania, and even parts of West Virginia. So hello to all of you, and thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we are glad you are with us. This segment is brought to you by the Parasociology Like page on Facebook. Parasociology is, is the study of how paranormal manifestations and experiences can affect a family, group, or collective. Parasociology also examines how different spirituality is practiced in different cultures. So go check that out. If you get a chance, leave a like for future content. All righty. Uh, back to the show. We are speaking with paranormal investigator, uh, historian, and publisher Mike Ricksacker from Haunted Road Media. You still with us, Mike? Yep, still here. Awesome. <laughs> Having a good time. Awesome. So, uh, when we left, uh, something that, uh, oh, here. I'm going to shift gears again. Uh, okay. What are your, you know, we, we talked before about um, animals and, and animal spirits and stuff. How, where do you stand on objects, haunted objects, and that kind of thing? Yeah, I, I think objects um, can have attachments to them. Um, not necessarily possessed, like a lot of people try to talk, you know, haunted dolls being possessed. And, things. and uh, have an attachment, yeah. Um, and I always use this one as an example, but I think it's a really good example of a, of a haunted object and an attachment to something. So... Um, this woman that I used to work with years ago, um, her father passed away. And so she and her sister, you know, kept going back to his house, cleaning things up, cleaning things out, you know, all doing all those sorts of things that you have to do when somebody passes away. And he had been a, a his big hobby was ham radio operation. You know, he was always down there in his basement, you know, playing around in the, on the radio and, and all that. Um, and they would just be, cleaning things out, doing things at the house, whatever. And that radio would turn on and it would be changing the, the channels, <laughs> you know, and doing all that. And, um, you know, they ended up, you know, calling downstairs, Hey dad, turn off, you know, turn off the radio and knock it off. And it, it would, it would turn off. So, you know, that was, you know, his passion in life. And so even after he had passed on, after he lost but, you know, Vanessa Hogel likes to call the meat sack <laughs> after he had <laughs> lost that. Um, he decided that he was going to keep coming back and, you know, keep playing around with his, his radio that he loves so much. So, yeah, objects can certainly be attached or have attachments. Uh, another thing I, I wanted to ask uh, was... How do you feel about uh, about uh, regulating the paranormal, like uh, communities or societies who do casework and whatnot, um, because of the explosion of so many paranormal societies out there and whatnot? And this is something that I, I bring up just because it doesn't get brought up too often, and. Uh, and uh, um, it's it's a well, good question. Yeah, it, it, it's a good question. Um, and, and I think it's difficult, you know, um, because there's so many differing opinions out there about what the paranormal is, um, about what different types of paranormal activity are. You know, it's 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 something that you know the regular mainstream community in many cases doesn't even believe in um so you know because they can't normally see it with their own eyes and that, that's kind of the issue um and so i think it's very difficult to regulate something like that um, and for one you would need a government body and you would need to come up with rules and bylaws and, and all those sorts of things um you know if you have a regulating committee you know who's a part of that what's 
what are these regulations that you're going to, to put into place? Um, I'm not saying it can't be done. I just think it's going to be very difficult because we see already within the community, you know, people at each other's throats just for having a simple difference of opinion where, you know, both of the people may be right to some degree because trying to prove the paranormal is so difficult. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that, that say, well, you know, we take a scientific uh, approach to, you know, the paranormal, and what have you, which is fine. That's great. Fantastic. But, you know, trying to institute the scientific method is nearly impossible because of the fact that you can't have a control object uh, within the paranormal unless you have a very, very, very specific test. Um, if you're just going into, you know, somebody's home to investigate or just, you know, on a location, your goal is to, your, your test is, is this place haunted? Your control object in this particular uh, test would be to have a place that's not haunted because you, you, you need that control object. You need that placebo or what have you. And you can't guarantee that your control object is not going to be haunted. <laughs> it's just right. Um, so it's very, very difficult to to actually be able to prove it, which makes regulating it even more difficult. Um, so, you know, and and people try it. I think people have good hearts, you know, where you, you talk about paranormal unity and all that, which, yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely for more people trying to agree and have a harmony within the field i think a lot of times people just need to agree to disagree and they don't um they end up trying to fight with each other too much which is which is sad um because i think we're all here you know with a very very similar passion for learning and discovering about the unknown um and i think most people are I'll say most people <laughs> are trying to help others in this. Some people are out for themselves. So that happens in any, any organization, any field, but I think most people are trying to help others. And so, um, right. And that's and maybe, why, yeah, go ahead. No, I just, uh, that would, well, that would be part of it would be, uh, the fact that there are people taking advantage of other people. Um, and you know, it's, I, I hear what you're saying. And the only reason I, I really bring it up, is because it's the it, it's where we're headed. Everything is regulated more so as time goes on. Having said that, uh, you know, sooner or later, it's going to reach a point where, for whatever reason, whether it's you know they're worried about people. Uh, uh, I don't know, people's safety or how they're conducting themselves or, or whatever. I mean, personally, I think it's fine. I would say you leave it alone. It's a bit, you know, uh, the, the community regulates itself well. And, you know, but yeah, you know, when you're talking about, you know, things uh, like, you know, like pseudoscience and all pseudoscience is, is, uh, um, you know, something that can't be replicated in a lab setting, you know. Uh, and what is that? The unknown and unexplained, you know, all of it. So, uh, it is tough. Yeah. Yeah. How can you regulate something that, like you said, everyone can't even agree on? It's all theory, you know? Um, yeah. And, and I kind of look at it like this, you know, the, the cyclical society there in, in London, in the UK, right. you know, it's been around since what the mid 1800s. Yep. Yes. They've, they've actually been around longer than archaeology has been a scientific field. <laughs> right. Good yeah. point. I, mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> so, I don't think that's changing anytime soon either. You know, so, you know, right. with, with archaeology back in the day, it was, I mean, if you think about archaeology's roots, it was, you know, all these people going to these ancient sites, grabbing for they, they were treasure grabbers really <laughs> they were trying you know to bring it to their museum that they were going to have out in you know wherever it was and um you know along the way they decided well maybe we should try to figure out you know some history behind these different objects <laughs> you know and so it kind of sprang up out of that um and now and now it has become extremely regulated you know where in any time that there's 
you know, something of historic significance that you tap into, you know, it, stop the presses were halting. Like if there's a construction site, boom, everything shuts down and you have all these, you know, archaeologists, you know, come out there and, and investigate and they have a very specific process that they that they go through. Um, so that's become extremely regulated uh, these days. Um, you know, so it's to me, it's it's kind of funny to see that how that has happened within, you know, the past hundred years and where our field has actually been around longer um, as you know, even having our own organizations and what have you. And it, it's, it's not regulated at all. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I have a question I'd like to ask you, and this is something that we also ask our guests because everyone has their own different viewpoints and opinions. What are your thoughts and views on the use of the Ouija board? Ah, uh. Um, I'm not opposed to it as long as you know what you're doing. Um, I think the Ouija board, I don't use one. I think in some ways it's kind of gotten a bad rap and our, our pop culture has, has done that. I mean, it's, it's function is to do exactly what we use a auto recorder for, you know, which is to communicate with spirits where I think people have gotten into trouble is, you know, it's been marketed for far too long as a game. And so, you know, kids would get together and you know, play around with the game. You know, before it was an adult game in the parlor because, you know, we didn't have all these things like television, radio, what have you. They would, they would have parlor games and, and adults would use it. And they would generally, I guess, follow the rules. Um, but as it ended up in the toy aisle that, you know, Toys R Us or what have you, um, you know, kids would pick it up and they ended up, you know, trying to trying to trick each other. You know, let's play around with the board. And, you know, it was, I, and not just as an example, um, maybe it was a group of, you know, 12, 13 year old girls. And they're trying to tell the other girl that, you know, some boy likes them who really doesn't or whatever, you know. But here's a device that's meant to try to communicate with spirits and the things that they're trying to that they're saying are you know, about spirits communicating and all that. So, you know, here's like this beacon that's forming for a spirit to pick up on and come through. And these girls keep going on about these boys. Like, what in the world is going on here? So I could certainly see where, you know, spirits were getting angry and upset and frustrated. And then something, you know, bad happens. Um, and of course, the girls were just playing around and now all these different things are happening. And you know, that's just an example, but, um, but I think that's what it comes down to is, um, you know, it's marketed as a game. People are, you know, using it in, in ways that it wasn't meant to be used. They don't, they don't know how to use it properly or anything like that. Where, uh, you know, audio recorder is you know, more straightforward, at least for me or what have you. So, I mean, I know people who use, you know, Ouija boards as tools, that are able to um, have successful sessions with it and are able to communicate just fine, you know, but, you know, we take the same risks, you know, we're using something like an audio recorder. We might be, we might get a hold of somebody that's, you know, a little bit more nefarious than, than the average person. So um, you're taking the same risks. I just think people generally don't know how to use or, like I said, it's in the toy aisle. I mean, now you have now you have Ouija boards um, with uh, Stranger Things on it, you know, uh, which again, oh, you know, marketing stuff. marketing toward the kids. Yeah, so they they're, have they're camouflage gonna... ones, pink ones, yeah. blue ones with with question cards with questions on them to ask the board. Well, I didn't know that that they had ones with question cards. Interesting. Oh yeah, they have like he said, they're pink and they're blue and they're 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 for little kids. I mean, you look at these boards, and they're yeah. Uh, yeah, they're specifically to uh, tar. I, you can see where they're marketed for children. Right. And yeah, uh, and, and and I don't agree with that. And so, well, let me ask you then: uh, Do you believe in demons and and angels, the supernatural? Yeah, yeah, I believe in angels and demons. Um, I do not believe that <laughs> if there's as much demon activity as. Uh, television likes to portray that's that's where television has gone you know they've had right. to amp they've had to amp everything up over the years that the only thing they can show now on television are demons because uh, <laughs> there's nowhere else to go um, right but yeah i mean there there are um 
you know, evil entities out there that have not walked the earth at 